Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very proud to be here with this distinguished group of panelists. Um, I'm going to talk today about employer drug costs and trends in terms of the expenses uh, employers have had in Canada and in a little bit in Quebec on their drug plans. Uh, I think it's important to understand why drug plans for an employer are really not insurance, why uh, we believe that the current model employers have for drug plans are really not sustainable, and what needs to be done. If we look at a typical uh, benefit plan uh, for an employee offered by an employer, uh, and this is a health benefit plan, it is made up of several components, drugs being one of them, uh, hospital coverage, uh, a number of other pieces of it, but drugs really do stand out as the biggest part of this piece of pie. Uh, so drugs are the largest component of drugs uh, benefit health benefit costs for employers, and they tend to grow at the fastest rate or increase in cost at a faster rate than the other components. When we look uh, at the cost of drugs for an employer, the average employee uh, in 2011 who made a claim on a drug plan spent $761 on drugs. Uh, and that went up uh, at a little slower pace uh, in 2011 over 2010, about half of a percentage. Um, and tr but traditionally, uh, drug, drug spending has doubled about every 10 years. So um, this data that I'm showing you comes from a, a report that was actually just released last week, an annual report uh, by Express Script Canada that identifies drug spending under employer drug plans. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Express Script Canada, if you do have a drug card uh, and you give that card to your pharmacist, um, Express Script is one of the companies that is behind those cards, and, and so they produce the transactions that employees um, use to uh, uh, pay claims through an insurance company. And so they produce drug trending reports so that we know what employers are spending or what the private sector is spending on prescription drugs each year. So you can see uh, nationally the average spending for an employee who made a drug claim in 2011 was $761. Now, if we take that uh, and look at the different provinces in Canada, uh, you can see that Quebec uh, has a little bit higher costs. The average person who made a prescription drug claim in Quebec uh, or made claims in the year was uh, had spending of $833, and that was an increase of 5.2% over the year previously. Now that number of $833 or $761 is very important because a lot of people think that their drug plan is insurance. And in fact, you really can't insure drugs. If you, I looked up the Wikipedia definition of insurance, and insurance is a form of risk man management primarily used to hedge against the risk of a contingent and uncertain loss. So life insurance is kind of a, a good example of something that's insurable, so to speak. It's unpredictable, it's very expensive, and there's a low number of claims. So it fits the model of insurance quite well. But if we look at drugs, drugs are very predictable. We know each person's going to spend $761 a year on their drugs. The average cost per prescription is quite low, around $60. And there's a very high number of claims. In fact, on average, the average employee fills 12.6 prescriptions per year. Pardon me, the average claimant that makes a drug claim fills 12.6 claims per year. So th the truth is that you can't really insure drugs in the same way that you insure other types of risk. And so the premiums, in essence, for an employer are based on what it actually costs and what we actually know. So. In reality, a drug premium for a typical employer is based on $761, which is the cost that we know and that's predictable, plus um, some uh, profit charges, some reserve funding, and there's it's a very complex structure in how a group insurance plans are funded and underwritten, but essentially it's a component of what we actually spend. And if we actually spend $761, then that's what the premium is going to be based on. And so it's a really different model from other types of insurance. It's, it's largely very predictable. 
If we look, and this is additional data from ESI, uh, on the average spending uh, in 2007, it was $757 per claimant, and they broke it down a couple of years ago in their report in terms of two types of drugs, traditional drugs and biologic or specialty drugs. And, and uh, ultimately, traditional pills represent about 82% of spending on an employer drug plan, so of that $757, around 82% was a traditional pill. And about 17% of that spending was on a biologic drug. And I like to say that the difference between a biologic drug and a traditional medication is that one is dead and one is alive. A, a traditional medication is a, is a chemical um, that's inert. And a biologic drug is typically DNA-based and comes, uh, uh, it's much more complicated to manufacture and comes at an extremely different cost structure. The average traditional medication is $51 per prescription, and the average biologic drug is $1,185 per prescription, a dramatically different base of cost. But the growth in the cost is also dramatically different. Traditional drugs grew by less than 1%, and the cost of biologic drugs grew by 13.2%. So if you project this into the future, it, it, it's not difficult to see where employer drug plan spending might be going. A small piece of the, of the pie today is, is much higher in cost per prescription and is growing at a much, much faster rate. So how much are prescription drug plans going to cost employers down the road? That example I used was from ESI Canada, but Mercer has a, a, a large group of clients. And we did similar statistics on their drug plans to see if the numbers rang true for them. And you can see uh, it was a very, very similar picture. Around 80% of spending is on traditional drugs that are fairly low cost, but around 20% of spending is on these biologic and specialty drugs that can cost thousands of dollars per prescription and can grow uh, at 20% per year. So again, projecting this model going forward, what might cost be for employers who have a drug plan in 10 years from now? Could be pot potentially unsustainable. Mercer's plan design database uh, looks at what are the designs that most employers offer and a lot of employers have 100% reimbursement, they don't mandate the reimbursement of generic drugs. Uh, they have no dispensing fee cap. They have open formularies, as have been discussed here today, where virtually all new drugs are automatically added to the plan. Not all employers share premium costs with employees. And, um, and most of them have an unlimited maximum, uh, lifetime maximum, or really representing an unlimited liability uh, to the employer. And largely employees are not engaged. They're not engaged in the cost because when employees have little or no cost, there's little or no consumerism and no desire to manage spending. And that comes down to a question that we've probably all heard in the doctor's office. The doctor often says, do you have a drug plan before he writes a prescription? And what the doctor's really asking is, do you care how much this costs? And often the response is, no, yeah, I have a drug plan. No, I don't care how much it costs. So as long as uh, people don't care about how much it costs, we're going to continue to see a rapid growth in the expenses. Now in Quebec, uh, there are uh, a number of requirements for employers who offer drug plans such as uh, minimum coinsurance, uh, maximum uh, out-of-pocket expense for employees, and employers do adhere to that. Um, they also must offer a drug plan if they offer other benefit plans. And so the question is, will they be able to continue to offer a drug plan? Will they be able to continue to offer uh, these benefits to employees? If costs go from $761 per employee per claimant per year to thousands of dollars, is this sustainable? And will employers be able to continue to fund these types of programs? We have a lot of stakeholders involved in this whole process with the employer kind of stuck in the middle as the funder uh, of all of these, uh, of the drug plan. And so really, uh, employers, if they want to continue to be able to offer drug benefit plans in the private sector, they must develop a comprehensive pharmacy benefit strategy to counteract the stakeholder initiatives that drive cost. 
Uh, for example, if employees who don't care or don't think they care how much it costs, we have to educate them and develop consumerism into the drug plan so that they are fully aware uh, that they do have a stake in the cost. So when the doctor says, do you have a drug plan, the answer to the question is different. So part of developing a, a, a pharmacy benefit strategy for an employer is determining what's covered under the plan and what limitations there are, what are the financial and other risks uh, you know, and a lot of our clients are looking at their financial risks. They cover 100% of any drug that legally requires a prescription. And we now have drugs that cost $500,000 a year, and a person may take those drugs for several years. So the day of the multi-million dollar drug cost for one employee is here. And is that a risk that an employer can afford to take? Uh, employers must deliver tactics to contain costs and influence responsible behavior um, in the providers and in uh, employees. They have to communicate to plan members and teach them how to shop smart, and certainly to measure the effectiveness on an ongoing basis and adjust accordingly. So I'm not here to weigh in and say, should we have public or private insurance? More just to say what the employer experience is, uh, and, and ultimately employers will determine whether they're going to be able to afford to offer these benefits into the future. And I think most employers do want to offer a drug plan to keep employees healthy and active at work. Um, but the question is, will they be able to afford to do so if spending goes into uh, the double digit increases every year, like we predict that they may do with the influx of biologic drugs? That concludes my portion of the presentation.